So today, uh, I'm working on Parascue history. I'm kind of a historian uh, fan myself. And so I've been deep, deep in World War II. And uh, so all right, let's, uh, let's rewind. All right, so the Air Force for the United States Army Air Corps was started by a bunch of crazy dudes who said, let's put guns on planes. And air power was born. So that's pretty cool. So then, um, fast forward to 1922, and this doctor, whose name I can't think of at the moment, said that in the future, airplanes will be like ambulances, and they'll, you know, transport the wounded from here to there type stuff. And then fast forward to 42, uh, Japanese are all over the place. Burma, trying to take over India, uh, not working. Here's, a, here's another little tidbit. I don't know if it, the day that the Japanese declared war on us, Thailand also declared war on us. Uh, and this is all pretty cool stuff that you can get from um, John Cassidy. If you Google John Cassidy, retired Master Sergeant of the United States Air Force, that's Cassidy, C-A-S-S-I-D-Y. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Had a couple beers with him over the years. Uh, very, very intelligent man. Good PJ. Uh, up in Alaska. Knows everything about pararescue. And he writes um, essays or briefs or reports, whatever you want to call them, on pararescue stuff. And very interesting, very well read, very deep... Uh, cited, referenced, I mean, the, the man knows his stuff. So, we're rewriting Parascue history for uh, teaching students. Um, I have been volunteered to do this. It's the greatest volunteer job I've ever had. So, all I've been doing the last two days is scouring the internet for um, Parascue history. Here's a the first script, John L. Porter, known as Blackie, was the first commander of the rescue squadrons, uh, or of the rescue squadron. They had like two B-25s and a B-17 and then a loaned-in C-47, um, or 46. I, I, I got numbers and then Pitsenbarger and, and all kinds of stuff rambling through my head right now, so it's, it's been a good day. And, uh... So this guy saw that there was a need because they were flying over what was called the Burma Hump between India and China trying to take uh, supplies. And every day these uh, crews were flying. And every day crews were getting lost and crashing and all kinds of stuff. And that first picture is uh, not the first actual rescue, but these three gentlemen right there were the the first three to jump in with a bunch of equipment, uh, guns, medical supplies, and uh, it's uh, Passy Fleckinger and uh, McKinsey um, are credited with the beginning of pararescue. Like the the first three guys are like, hey, we'll, we'll jump. What the hell? Um, there's a bunch of I've been reading about training and and. Um, smoke jumpers and dudes teaching each other and you know uh, it's just amazing the uh, the ingenuity and the can-do attitude and just everything they came up with to to make stuff happen you know they, they weren't like limited by i don't know has anyone ever done this before i don't know it sounds crazy i don't know fuck it man that's pararescue that is your bread and butter pararescue let's go rescue people who cares about anything else? Like, that's all that matters. Let's rescue people. And, um, so it's very exciting. And so, like I was saying, so it's, this hump was, uh, basically the Himalayas. I don't know how you call that a hump, because the Himalayas are kind of tall. But, hey, if you want to call it a hump or a bump or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm cool with it. Um, so, they, uh, this, uh, C-46 goes down. They're like, hey, let's go get them. Fleckinger says, hey, I'll jump. The other two are like, well, if you jump, we're going to be stuck up here by ourselves, so can we go with you? 
And he's like, sure, come on. So they landed. Uh, only one person died. It was the co-pilot. Uh, when he went out, they think that the plane rolled over on him and uh, maybe pulled a, pulled a shoot a little early. So he got wrapped up. He died when the plane crashed. Uh, the radio guy, before he went out, got a good SOS. And so the rescue plane was actually to them within an hour and a half. So these guys jump out and uh, the crew's pretty messed up. They, they couldn't find a couple guys. They found them the next day. Uh, when the guys was really messed up, had uh, been eaten by so many mosquitoes and sucked on by so many leeches that he didn't have a whole lot of blood. So they uh, decided to stay with this village for a couple of days. And, oh, by the way, you know, we'll pay you if you'll build us a hut. Um, I think they ended up being there about a week, maybe four or five days. Um, so they go and they um, build the hut. They work on the guys. They get them to where they can transport them. Uh, people they could walk, walked. People they couldn't walk, didn't walk. They carried them. And 28 days later, uh, the, the three guys and the 17 crew members all came out of the jungle, which is that picture, and thus Pararescue was born. Uh, very exciting, very interesting, really good read. Like I said, John Cassidy, Google him, and uh, be prepared to be amazed. He's got all kinds of stories. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm neck deep in World War II right now. I, uh, trying to get good info and citations and, you know, stuff like that, so, um, they're, they're just a lot, so, uh, it's exciting, I'm pretty stoked, I'm getting paid to, uh, read and research history, um, I think, <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't get much better than that than being a cone and getting paid to work out all day, so, uh, Pararescue has been very, very good to me, and uh, so it's been a good day. I'm excited. I know I've said that like eight times. I'm not trying to convince you. I think I'm just totally stoked on what kind of day I had, and that you know I, I got to contribute to the team, and you know helping helping you guys is you know what drives me because. Uh, too old to jump out of airplanes. Well, I'm not too old to jump out of airplanes. I'm too broke to jump out of airplanes. <laughs> it's where I'm at. You're never too old to jump out of airplanes. Your, your body just might be too broke, but that's all right because my mind is still fresh and uh, man, if I could have been at someplace like Agincourt or up in that plane, you know, 2nd August 1943, I'd go. I'd go right now. You know, whatever. You know, damn the torpedoes, <laughs> throw it into overdrive, let's go. So, I um, hope you guys are having a good day. It's uh, Tuesday, one day closer to Friday. So, don't worry, the weekend's coming. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm euphorically high from reading about history all day and just being excited. It's, it's been a good day. So, um, Hope you guys had a good day, and I will chat with you guys later.